Okay, so what I will do today is that I will give an introduction to this molecular motors. I will not do a lot of maths today, I will keep that for next class, but I thought I will just introduce what motors are and in what contexts we want to study them. Okay, so here is uh, one of the most famous examples of a molecular motor. This is the kinesin motor which is walking on a microtubule. So, this orange thing over here is kinesin this green track over here is the microtubule and this uh, darker green sphere of which you can only see a part is the cargo that this motor is carrying. So, it is very nice in that. So, this is a protein basically it walks along this microtubule track by using ATP to bind and unbind this microtubule binding domain. So, which are let us say its legs ok. So, it places its legs one after another and it walks and on its head it is attached again chemically to this cargo. In this case a vesicle it can attach to different types of cargo and it transports this cargo inside this vesicle you might have different proteins or whatever that needs to be transported from one end of the cell to another. So, it just carries this cargo along these tracks and it does so processively and uh, repetitively many many times over the life cycle of the cell. So, it takes in what it does is that it takes in chemical energy in the form of ATP hydrolysis. So, these are active processes they require an input of energy. So, ATP binds it hydrolyzes forming ADP plus phosphate plus energy that energy is utilized into converted into this mechanical energy which results in this directed non random motion. So, this is not like a random walk where this motor you know sort of does takes one step this way or the other another step the other way these motors move along because these microtubules remember have a polarity it has a minus end and a plus end. So, there is a directionality to the railway track of this microtubules and then they move directedly on this underlying railway track. So, this is one motor there can be other types of motors for example, this RNA polymerase motor. So, again there is this nice video. So, here is my DNA. Uh, the DNA is wrapped around these histone proteins forming the nucleosome right. If you do not remember this you should go back and recall it it is also part of the quiz question. So, when this DNA needs to be transcribed you need to form the mRNA then this RNA polymerase will comes and binds to this DNA it first opens up from the histones. So, that it can be read then this RNA polymerase comes and binds to this and then it moves along this DNA track while pro while forming this mRNA by reading the sequence. And again this movement of this RNA polymerase is an energy driven process it takes in chemical energy in the form of ATP it converts it to directed motion as it moves along the DNA backbone and it produces this RNA transcript. So, again this is an example of a motor. So, anything that takes in this uh, chemical energy and converts into some sort of mechanical work is what I will call a biological motor and they can be of different types as we will see as we go along. But for this RNA polymerase which we have seen in the context of this DNA transcription that also fits our definition of the motor. So, for the first part what I will try to focus on are these uh, translational motors families of translational motors. There can be other types. So, although I will talk I will do not think I will talk about them today. Let me just say that rough or broadly you can say that I will categorize my motors into maybe three classes transcriptional motors like this kinesin or this RNA polymerase motor that we saw or these other motors which I will discuss kinesin, dynines, myosins, whatever. So, these are motors that takes in chemical energy and it uh, sort of uses that chemical energy to produce directed motion along different substrates in different contexts, but it produce directed motion. Linear sort of motion along a track so something like this. 
So, that is one sort of motor. Another sort of motor could be rotate rotatory motors, rotatory motors. And where have we seen a rotatory motor? The helical flagella, for example, in the E. coli, where uh, the motor that rotates the helical flagellum that is an example of a rotatory motor. Again, it takes in chemical energy, but it converts that not into linear motion, but into rotational motion. So, that is a different class of motors. Or you could think of stuff like polymerization motors. For example, microtubules and actins themselves, they can take in energy, they polymerize, and in the process of that polymerization, they can do some work by exerting forces on different substrates. So, that is a different class of motor that is called polymerization motor. So, this would be actins, microtubules and so on. And so on. Microtubules. So, okay. so, all of these are motors because broadly they fall under the class of active processes. So, these are systems uh, protein complexes that take in chemical energy in the form of ATP or GTP or something and converts into some sort of motion. So, for today what I will deal with is mostly these tra translational motors and uh, in particular motors that walk on microtubules and on actin. So, here are three representative motors. So, this motor over here is what is called the uh, is a uh, example of a myosin category of motors. So, myosins are motors that walk along actin filaments. So, myosins will walk only along actins. Myosins these walk along actin filaments. If you see the structure, there is this stalk of the motor, then over here are these two head domains, and over here there is something called the tail domain. Okay. The tail domain is the one that binds the cargo, okay. so the vesicle, like the vesicle in the previous animation. The head domain is what binds the uh, stock or the track along which the motor walks. Here in the middle is something that is uh, it is uh, example of a kinesin motor and kinesins as opposed to di as opposed to myosins they walk along microtubules they walk along microtubule filaments. Not only that, they walk in a specific direction along microtubule filaments. So, the microtubule remember has a minus and a plus depending on whether alpha tubulin is exposed or beta tubulin is exposed, it is a chemical polarity. And then kinesins walk towards the plus end of microtubules, okay, always. Whenever you have a kinesin motor, they will walk towards the plus end of the from the minus end towards the plus end of And again, it is roughly similar, it has these head domains. So, the head domains are much smaller, the tail domains look different. So, structurally this is different from the myosin family, but functionally it is somewhat the structure is somewhat conserved in that you have this head domains which bind to the track microtubule in this case, the tail domains which bind to the cargo. And finally, there is this other class which is dynenes, which is dynenes. These also work along microtubule filaments this also walk along microtubule filaments except they walk in the reverse direction. So, they walk from the plus end of microtubules towards the minus end as opposed to kinesins ok. The dynein structure is uh, somewhat more complicated than the kinesins or the myosins and as a result its functionality also has some complications we will come to that later. But at the simplest level it is again the same you have these head domains which will bind to the track the microtubule in this case and the tail domains which will bind to the cargo. I call it examples of uh, myosin, kinesin and dynein um, because these are basically not a single motor, but these are a family of motors ok. So, for example, if I think of myosin, here is the myosin fam super family of motors. So, these are all different proteins, all different myosin like proteins occurring in different organisms or in even in the same organism in different cell types. So, there are myosin 1, myosin 2 and so on and even within one there are subclasses of myosin motors. They might differ by amino acid residues, but they will all roughly 
do the same thing in that they will bind to an actin filament and they will walk along the actin filament. The actin the myosin have not written whether it is a plus walking motor or a minus walking motor because uh, in myosins there are categories which walk towards the plus end of actin and categories which walk towards the minus end. But they are not different proteins as such unlike in the case of kinesins and diamonds. So, even kinesin you would have a super family like this. Uh, there are different types of kinesin. So, for what is shown here is a particular kinesin, kinesin 1. There can be other types of kinesins, but again and they will differ in the sort of cargoes they can bind, um, they will differ in the organisms in which they are found, but they will all bind to microtubules and they will all walk from the minus end to the plus end. Similarly, there will be different types of dynines, but again they will all bind on microtubules and walk from the plus end to the minus end. So, these are if you think about the diversity these are quite complicated objects, uh, but as long as we are talking in terms of a modeling context I will often use kinesin as something that just you know I will not care about what particular cargo it binds and so on. I will just consider it to be a motor that binds to microtubules and walks along the plus end. How do I say that these motors are different? One is of course, by looking at the structure and the minor acid residue and so on. So, at a chemical level you can see that these this protein is different from this protein is different from that protein ok. But physically one can also show that these uh, motors behave differently uh, by using different experiments. For example, uh, one common experiment that is used to characterize the properties of a motor are what are called these force velocity curves. So, you apply a sort of force. Uh, so, let us say this here is my kinesin. Let us say here is my microtubule on which I have this kinesin. It is a very bad kinesin, but uh, this kinesin motor binding okay. here is my cargo. And what I can do is that I can it works with some velocity, some average velocity it will walk along the microtubule. What I could do is that I could pull back on this cargo with some force, let us say. The cargo is let me just draw it on the cargo. So, let us say I pull back on the cargo with some force. Uh, generally, uh, these experiments are done using optical traps. So, you trap the cargo bead and you pull on it with some opposing force, and you see how this velocity changes as a function of force. How does this velocity change as a function of the force that you apply? And if you look at it for different motors, uh, this curve will look different. So, these are all not the force axes are all normalized by the force at the half maximal velocity because the forces that are produced by these different motors are very different, but I have just normalized it. So, that when f is equal to 0 whatever it is it is the y axis is normalized with a maximum velocity. So, that all points on the y axis for these different motors all fall on 1. So, this is data for 3 different motors. One is this kinesin motor that we have been talking about. The second is the blue curve is this RNA polymerase motor that I showed. And the third one is this phage packaging motor. Okay. The phage packaging motor is in viruses like bacteriophage, you need to package your DNA inside this viral capsid, and that again happens through a motor. So, that is this phage packaging motor. So, that is the one shown in the red curve. And of course, when force is very high, all of these velocities will drop to 0. So, if you apply a counter uh, you apply an opposing force eventually provided you apply a large enough force all of these motors will stop ok. And so, the velocity in each will drop to 0, but how it drops to 0 is uh, very different for different classes of motors. So, kinesin so for example, RNA polymerase has this very strong sigmoidal curve. So, for small forces it does not really affect the velocity that much then beyond a certain this uh, critical force it sort of very quickly and very sharply drops to 0. Uh, kinesin is somewhat of a more of a less uh, steeper sigmoid, whereas this phage packaging motor it sort of drops linearly with force almost for a very long range. The more force you apply the more the the more uh, the slower the velocity and then it slowly drops to 0. If you were to do it for different motors you will see different sorts of uh, curves that emerge. And you can use this sort of force velocity curves to characterize. So, the internal workings of all of these motors are different, 
and what this force velocity curve shows you is sort of a macroscopic manifestation of the differences in this internal architecture of the internal machinery of these motors. So, it is a reflection of the fact that these different motors have different mechanisms ok. So, how do I how can I characterize motors for example, uh, what are the different quantities that I can use. So, one is this thing that we have been talking about direction of motion right. So, for example, kinesin is plus n directed on microtubules whereas, dynians are minus n directed okay. I could talk about the speed of the motor. So, for the speed of course, depends on the velo depends on the force as we saw. So, these v is a function of f, but I could talk about the zero force velocity right. So, in the absence of any opposing load how does this what is this velocity with which the motor moves. So, for kinesin for example, the step size is 8 nanometers and this 8 nanometer step size is nothing but the size of the underlying lattice basically. You remember this microtubule consists of this alpha beta dimers right and the size of this alpha beta dimers is 8 nanometers. What it means is that this kinesin bind hop from one of these alpha beta tubulin subunits to the next one and therefore, the step size of these kinesin motors is 8 nanometers. The speed is some of the order of microns per second. Uh, so, some 6 microns per second for the case of kinesins. Again these are all uh, sort of typical numbers uh, in the sense that if you did different if you looked at different kinesin motors for example, you would maybe find some differences, but roughly of that order. 